Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovlin, United Nations Fleet Command. Date, Standardized Human Time, November 28, 2136. An observer that only witnessed the clash between the Federation coalition and the humans wouldn't notice the Coltian strength. But watching Commonwealth heavyweight scrap with the Massex, it was clear they knew more about martial policy than they let on. Their fleet stayed on the move, with tactics that bordered on predatory. One ship would distract a defending vessel, while others flanked it and cut it off from its allies. The Massex had several disadvantages, to make matters worse. They were tied to the defense of Qua, similar to humanity's pitfall while protecting Earth. Their ships were also large and slow-moving, as they had to be spacious enough to accommodate the bulky mammals. Speedy cruisers, like Slanuk and Marcel's patrol boat, didn't exist in their arsenal. Tyler straightened his jacket. Gojid, what's the situation? Friendly casualties? The Colchians managed some lucky hits with the ambush fleet. Our tally's down about a hundred, give or take. I should have clarified. I was asking about the Mazix. Optically, it looks like they're getting overrun on the viewport. Good news? The enemy were holding back, until we got here. Needed to drag this on long enough to lure us in. But the Mazix are getting their teeth kicked in, sir. Point defenses are inoperable on both lunar satellites, and their ship count is bleeding. Anso maneuvered the viewport, while his reddish ears pricked up. Our warship was blazing toward Qua's orbit with the rest of the UN fleet. The lush vegetation across the planet was mixed with city lights, without any ashen patches. Sensors confirmed what my eyes told me, with no signs of residue from a bomb. The six billion souls on world were safe, for now. However, Federation vessels were encroaching on the Mazic's inner sanctum. Friendly resistance had become negligible, the marker of an overwhelming defeat. Escape pods were jettisoned from a few craft, but the Colchians pounced on any they saw. It was bizarre to watch a true herbivore receive predator treatment, just for defecting. I hope Venlo Prime is heavily fortified. They must be viewed as the biggest traitors of all, the ones to blame for humanity's survival. Tyler bit his lip. This reminds me of Earth. We were powerless to stop them. When our air was venting, and the captain ordered us to abandon ship, I knew we lost. I. You thought it was the end of humanity, Anso finished. I'm sorry. Me too. Makes me nostalgic for the cradle and that was a fucking war zone. Carlos nodded. It was all simpler then. Sam and I were stationed at the Hague during the cradle landing. Yeah, guard duty was better than playing war crime bingo, Samantha snorted. Wonder if we're ever going to fry, sorry, try those bird bastards. Freudian slip. Something flashed in the sandy-haired officer's eyes. Tyler's gaze darted over to me, and lingered for a long moment. The tall guy swallowed hard, looking rather distracted. The yodel seemed clueless to his friend's deliberation, but I wondered if Marcel's pack mate had stumbled upon my identity. My guard's previous post implied they would have at least sighted goaded criminals. Carlos pinched his nose. Where are you going to find an impartial jury? Or a legal defender? Do the dumplings even deserve a trial at all? The female guard bared her teeth, darkness swirling in her green eyes. I think they should commit suicide, you know, by bullet to the back of the head. We don't execute POWs. Sam, sometimes I really hope you're being facetious. Yeah, my bad, I guess the rights of murderers are a priority. A billion civvies dead is just a statistic, right? As the UN guards bickered, Captain Monaghan did a sweep of the bridge. Every station was in smooth order, ready for another bout of battle. Both the Colchians and the Mazics had noticed our approach, friendlies were flooding our calm station with pleas. It must be difficult for humans to sort out which regions carried the highest importance. Do we have an intercept course, Gojid? 
Tyler opened and clenched his fist, glowering at his console. Or should I say, Sovlin? I blinked. Um, sir. Do your job. We'll deal with this later. My heart leapt up into my throat, and fear slowed my thought process. Humans hadn't caused spine bristling in a while, but my brain knew Tyler was a threat. I never meant for the sandy-haired officer to identify me. All I wanted was to help the UN win this battle and achieve retribution. Samantha and Carlos abandoned their squabble. The male guard tensed up in case Tyler moved to assault me. While I was grateful that he was willing to protect me, I didn't want his interference. A beating from Marcel's pack mate was the least I deserved, if anything, I wished the herbivore human had struck me during his visit. Anso gawked at me. You two know each other? Not. Did I authorize you to chat? Tyler snarled. Where the fuck are those intercept routes? The yodel ducked his head. Eh sorry, my friend. I've never seen you act like this, it's making me uncomfortable. Not you. You can talk as much as you want, Anso. I need a distraction from this chucklefuck. Tyler squeezed his eyes shut, but his knuckles were turning white. I don't think the big guy realized he was granting a peek of his canines. Captain Monaghan drifted past the sensor station, and worry creases lined her forehead. Our commander must have picked up on the tension, because she hovered by us for an extra second. Status report. Monaghan cleared her throat, wrapping the desk. Got anything for navigations? I'm concerned we might be too late for Qua. I squinted at the readout and chewed at my claws. And no viable intercept courses. We can't get there in time. As several Federation ships are minutes from orbital range. What if the Mazix stop them or slow them down? Ma'am, the Mazix are all but dead in the water. I used to believe the Federation would never bomb their own. I fear that's wishful thinking these days. The Terran captain meandered back to her chair with a thoughtful expression. My gaze focused on the viewport, trying to block out Tyler's sideways looks. If nobody was removing me from my duties, I wasn't going to broach the topic. A predator like myself could be helpful to Qua's defense, this was the only way I could justify my existence. Our warship cruised ahead, well above recommended acceleration. The engines were going to be burned out when all was said and done. The humans accepted serious risks to save innocent lives, I don't know how I didn't see their compassion from the start. The Predators intended to stand up for the Mazics, even if on paper, it was too late. Farcel armor-heavy ships hung back, determining where to insert their presence. The vessels nipped at the heels of any Mazic stragglers and executed flanking maneuvers with ease. I wondered if these would become the standard Federation model, given the new variables. Humanity's shield breakers wouldn't be as powerful against armored craft. Those kinetic railguns better have a lot left in the tank. It'll be like biting on granite, if not. Mazic assistance calls continued to register on Terran bandwidths. The amount had dipped, which correlated with rapid casualties on sensors. The Federation was on a bombing trajectory, unimpeded, only a few hundred defenders were left. Concern was visible on the faces of many human crew members. Anso yipped with indignation. Five vessels of Farsal make, forming a barricade in our path. Should we slow down? No. We should speed up, Tyler growled. I guarantee, our nerve's a hell of a lot stronger than theirs. Samantha grinned. That's not saying much. But I'm all for painting a bullseye on their back. Converted tillfish gunships, now decked out in UN insignia, hugged our sides. The allied duo broke with our pace and threw a little extra into the throttle. The Farsal vessels were waiting to put up an ionic barrier. They must have noticed the magnetic bombs, it didn't make sense to establish fortifications that would be knocked out. Fortunately, our warship still toted our plasma railgun. 
The five hostiles waited for the telltale energy spike, before raising shields. Between the exorbitant armor and the well-timed barrier, our target shrugged off the blast. I could see a gash in the hull plating, but the enemy could seal off the compartment. Terran gunships went after the damaged foe, but the other farcel condensed around their weakest link. Armor tailored to kinetics was the predator's match, these ships were designed to function past shield failures. I wasn't sure how even the humans could thwart these measures. If combat dragged on, it would waste precious time for the Mazic homeworld. Anso shoved me out of the way. We have to reach Kwa. I'm going to take a look, since Gojid Savlin hasn't done anything useful. My first instinct was to challenge the primitive, this wasn't the time to make a fool of himself. Did the uplift think he could join a predator exchange program, and magically qualify for tactical roles? Fighting wars in the third dimension was a far cry from tilling fields. Humans, of all species, should understand how behind the times Anso was. I couldn't believe he was anything more than the ship mascot. The only reason I bit my tongue was to avoid provoking Tyler further. It was the officer's job to intervene here, despite any notion of friendship. However, the yodel was correct on my inefficacy. Tyler recognizing me weighed on my psyche, and guilt made it difficult to conjure up tactics. Perhaps asking for a transfer couldn't wait for the battle's conclusion. Once the marsupial floundered for a bit, I could hand the station over to Carlos and Sam. Do ramming tactics work? We could clip them on the side, velocity and mass are in our favor, Anso said. Long as we don't strike them head on, we should remain operational. Tyler stroked his chin. Navigations will need to find a perfect angle. We don't want to knock out any vital functions. Well, we don't even have to take these farcel out. They're stationary, they won't catch us if we pass them. Just need to shove the bastards aside. The sensor's officer relayed the findings to Monaghan, who brought the NAV station into the loop. Our warship drifted toward a farcel ship's flank, the course adjustment was incremental. The Terran gunships took the lead, distracting our opponents with kinetics. It hadn't taken humans long to discover how atrocious prey were at multitasking. Our tail was angled away from the target, that was an attempt to keep the engine secure. Despite my skepticism on an uplift's capabilities, Anso was quick thinking. I wondered if he had predator disease, with such a knack for violence. It was one thing with human hunters, but genuine herbivores weren't meant for aggression. Are yodel doctors even trained in signs of predator disease? Do they screen for it in children at all? Carlos tugged me into a seat, as our collision was imminent. The male guard looked nervous, listening to crash alarms on the PA. In contrast, Samantha's eyes smoldered with venom, she showed little concern for her welfare. That predator was a kindred spirit in many ways, having lost enough to seek vengeance at any cost. Our spacecraft broadsided the enemy, hurling it out of our path. The impact sent a jolt through our frame, and my head whipped forward. A harness sucked me back into my seat, I hadn't even noticed Carlos fasten it. Several predators seemed disoriented by the crash, but navigations managed to retain control. Anso howled with delight. You guys are insane. I can't believe that worked. If you can't believe it worked, then why the fuck did you suggest it? I groaned. Tyler glared at me, eyes stony. You did great, Anso. If I didn't need you on the viewport, I'd stick you in that spiky bastard's place now. Not wishing to respond, my gaze shifted out the viewport. The farcel craft was torn asunder, with its armor caved in from the wreck. The engine had given out as well, leaving it immobile. Momentum flung the enemy well out of position, and likely incapacitated the occupants. I couldn't imagine inertial dampeners kept up with that drastic shift. The humans didn't stop to admire their handiwork, with Qua within reach. There were no conflicts in the nearby vicinity. Mazic friendlies had vanished from the sensor data, after their final stand. 
Our comm station had gone quiet long ago, aside from the occasional status request from the surface. I didn't want to guess at the casualty count. Captain Monaghan was expressionless, presiding over the bridge. How could she retain such stoicism, knowing the imminent tragedy ahead? Humanity had raced to the Mazik's defense and wrought havoc on the Federation assailants. Our victory was convincing and swift, enough so to rout the ambush fleet from Shah. Hostiles reached orbital position all the same and left the Predators with no good options. I could see the Coltians hovering above the green orb, poised to drop their payloads. This homeworld had been stripped of its defenses, and the army was in shambles. We could kill every last enemy, but I didn't see a way to stop bombs from striking the planet. Predator fleet, come in. The voice crackling over the radio was unmistakably Coltian. Change your vector now, or we will drop antimatter weapons on the planet. This is your only warning. Murmurs rippled across the bridge, but Monaghan raised a hand for silence. UN Command's orders to take up a holding pattern were immediate, human empathy wouldn't permit them to sacrifice civilians. Was allowing the Federation to subdue the Mazics a good alternative though? It would turn a valuable ally into a puppet state. The United Nations agreed upon our captain's name when she offered to handle communications. Our battle-tested ship, unfortunately, carried seniority within the hodgepodge Terran fleet. The humans' original constructions were gutted during the crocodile invasion, surviving craft were few and far between. Qualified officers were in limited supply as well. Our captain's position was unenviable, in my view. I wasn't sure what room there was to negotiate with those tentacled liars or what an acceptable outcome was. More baffling was that the Coltians spoke to the human military at all. It was a blessing the Predators didn't request my input. Monaghan pressed a microphone to her lips. Federation attackers, we've halted our advance. We'd like to talk. Let's find a resolution that doesn't involve innocent bloodshed, all right? The captain signaled to the comm station, and the technicians extended a hail. All we could do was wait for the Coltian's response, predatory might wouldn't save the day here. A single bomb hitting a Mazic metropolis would kill millions, which forced us to the bargaining table. It was time to see how crafty humans were in endeavors beyond fighting. Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovlin, United Nations Fleet Command. Date, Standardized Human Time, November 28, 2136. The human fleet maintained their positions, while the Mazic homeworld sat in a precarious spot. Our hail was still transmitting, though the enemy hadn't picked up. An evacuation transport soared out of the atmosphere, scrambling civilians to safety. The Colchians nailed the spacecraft with plasma and aimed it just right to take it out of commission. It seemed that they weren't trying to decimate it, after all. Captain Monaghan's nostrils flared with agitation. Federation Coalition, you fire on civilian targets again, and our ceasefire is over. We will not tolerate such actions. A violet Coltian blinked onto a hola screen. You're not going to sacrifice the Mazics for victory and glory? Are you actually clever enough not to show your heartless side? I question who the heartless ones are when you're the ones threatening a civilian populace. I couldn't care less about victory we're here to save lives. That's what humans stand for. The enemy commander paced back and forth, unfazed by the visual of a predator. His crew was a homogenous blend of Coltians, rather than including aliens. The emerald surface of Qua was visible in their viewport, along with three target locks on the sensor readout. If I didn't know better, who would think the Commonwealth officer didn't know what to do? He waved a tentacle. Damn it. We never wanted to kill them, we wanted to kill you. This fight wasn't supposed to happen like this. Tell me something I haven't heard before, Samantha grumbled beside me. Tyler glowered at her. Silence. Luckily, my guard's quip wasn't picked up on the call, one wrong word could end in catastrophe for the civilians. 
I was relieved to hear the Colchians didn't want to initiate the bombing. At least there was some morality among their ranks, however low the bar was. The Terran captain took the incendiary statement in stride and curved her lips down. Well, why don't you fight us then? What is it that you want? Monahan demanded. The Colchian's eyes bulged. We want you to stop gaining power, predators. Nikonis is right, you show no restraint in your wars. Your aggression is the crocodiles, a hundredfold. And your solution to this perception is untampered aggression of your own? I guarantee, if you bomb Kwa, you're going to give more species reasons to leave the Federation. You can't undo millions of deaths. That blood will be on your conscience forever. Then back off. You won't, you're too proud. I can't do that. Especially given your history of changing species, irreversibly. So which city should I bomb first, Predator? I hear Twinio has a high industrial capacity, shame it's a bustling civilian hub too. The Predator captain had her hands behind her back, but I could see her nails digging into her palm. That indignation was something I shared, hearing such callous threats against the planet. It reminded me of the Arxer's disregard for civilians, the Colchians might have studied hunters a bit too much. Bartering with lives was dishonorable. Monahan bared her teeth and slanted her eyebrows. That's your prerogative. But when humanity reaches Alpha, and we will, we'll glass one Colchian city for every bomb you drop here. Blood for blood. Should we start with the School of the Flora, or do you have a substitute in mind? You. Shut up. If you surrender now, we'll treat your lot under our rules of warfare, as prisoners with fair treatment. Trust me, because of those unrestrained wars you saw, you want us to apply the Geneva Conventions. It's going to be a bad day for you if we decide those are no longer applicable. I recalled my lawyer's explanation regarding the UN's prohibition of torture. I was curious what other crimes and devices the Earthlings banished in those agreements. It was a safe bet that contraptions humans thought too depraved for use were beyond the realms of our nightmares. All predators were prone to unfathomable cruelty, that was why I'd been able to torture Marcel with such viciousness. Humans are capable of everything the Arxer have done. They choose not to, but nobody wants to see them go fully unhinged. Fear flashed in the Colchian commander's golden eyes. The intensity in Monaghan's hungry gaze brought extra weight to her threat, it was like staring into the countenance of death. That unyielding scowl was an assertion of dominance, whether done consciously or not. I found it difficult to shrug off her animosity, though it wasn't directed at me. I'd ar rather die than see any of my men surrender to you. As for Offa, you wouldn't flaunt your cruelty while masquerading for the prey, the Colchian hissed. Monahan bobbed her shoulders. You're confused. Either we're aggressive predators that can't control ourselves, or we do show restraint. Pick one. I, you're twisting my words. Alien freak. I have no time for petty insults. What is an acceptable way to get you far, far away from this system? That's what we all want. The Commonwealth officer sported a stricken expression. Hatred sparkled in his eyes, and he stole a glance back at his bridge crew. No captain wanted to watch their subordinates die. I always felt responsible when my plans went awry, and casualties ensued, decisions traced back to the commander. The Colchian saw in the underlings' faces how much they longed to escape from the predators. The prospect of being hunted by humans terrified them, Terrans were too methodical to outwit. The Arxer could get sloppy due to their food aspirations, but the primates treated war like a mathematical equation. They sought the simplest solution to render the enemy dead. Let 1500 of our ships leave, and don't attempt to pursue them. A few hundred of us will stay behind, the enemy leader decided. You so much as scan us, I will order Qua bombed with the remainder. Monahan straightened. A smart decision. You don't want to lose so many ships, 
with all the souls aboard. The UN will allow you to flee, that's acceptable to my parameters. Anso scoured the viewport, as ship activity picked up around the planet. The Terran fleet opened avenues for enemy departures, and made no efforts to engage them. The more hostiles we cleared out of the area, the lower the maximum casualties were. This was a step in the right direction, as far as I was concerned. The yodel shook his head. Should I prepare for pursuit? We can't just let those bastards leave. I'll wait for the captain's orders, but I imagine we'll honor our word. It sets a good precedent to be able to negotiate, Tyler answered. Carlos shot a glance at Sam. I know what you're thinking, but it would be nice to have options on the table. Maybe they'll even start letting us surrender, giving us sapient rights. The female human snorted. Dream on. They like us better dead. Sometimes, I think the Federation likes us better dead too. But the truth is, they don't care about us at all, on so spat. Did you know they offered to destroy our railroads and steamboats? My eyes narrowed at the uplift's distortion of events. The Federation weren't my favorite faction anymore, but clearing out obsolete technology was helpful. I didn't understand why the humans were giving him sympathetic looks. Disgust crossed Tyler's expression, and Carlos wrinkled his nose as well. I chewed at my claws. Well, you don't need them anymore. You're stuck in the past, Anso. No reason to keep relics around. Anso curled his lip. That's what they said. They called it a celebration, as they demolished our shipyards. Maybe we still like the things we built. But the Federation's tech is better. Is this about pride? Pride is not seeking your own identity. Fuck you. Carlos swatted my neck. Erasing someone's culture and beliefs is a form of genocide. I'd think you of all people would understand that, Sovlin. Tyler glared at me, before storming off to comfort Anso. The mention of my name was enough to make his blood boil, the wedge between us hadn't been dealt with. My wrongdoing wasn't his fault, and it had never been my intent to disrupt his work. When the current crisis was resolved, I owed the tall human an apology. The fleeing Colchians had put some distance between themselves and Qua, while rushing to escape the FTL disruptor's range. I imagined they were looking over their shoulder for pursuing predators. None of them eased up on the accelerator, since being the herd straggler was a death sentence. But the humans resisted the urge to chase, they rarely succumbed to hunter desires. Terrans can conduct themselves like normal people, despite their deficits. It never ceases to impress me. It's beautiful, isn't it? Captain Monaghan turned her back to the camera, gazing at the stars. We never had to fight. We could work to make something better. Quit it with your lies. Counting colonies, 34 worlds have been wiped out since we met you. And you've been here for four months, the Colchian muttered. We didn't start, or even bomb, any of those. It's not our fault everyone keeps attacking us and abandoning your defenses. You're in cahoots with the Arxer, pulling the strings even. You wouldn't attract them if you weren't rotten to the core. Humans enjoy killing, for all your empathy. I enjoy stopping bad people from hurting others. Nobody else has to die today. Certainly not innocent hostages, because you hate us. On our honor, we'll let you all leave unharmed. The Colchian shifted with discomfort, it was clear he mistrusted the human's proposition. Several of the ships he left behind were making a break for it, without waiting for orders. Flighty captains weren't going to give the predators time to change their mind. It left a sour taste in my mouth, to see the enemy getting away. On your honor? The Colchian flailed with exasperation. What good does that do me? Predators deceive. Monaghan snorted. So do, pray, look at you. I haven't lied to you once, nor has the human race. Please, think of the Masics. I, I'm not a murderer. I don't want to kill children. 
herbivores. Shit, your trick is working. We'll leave. The video feed switched off before the human could respond. The Colchian ships glided away from Qua's vulnerable surface, maintaining their formation. The Terran fleet honored the non-aggression pact, rather than confronting the enemy. The predators were here to save their allies, first and foremost. The human crew offered a rousing applause for Captain Monaghan, which took the aliens by surprise. I was accustomed to the predators' noise level, after living around them for months. Bringing a Terran nearby was a fast way to dismantle peace and quiet. The poor Fissan on comms bucked in agitation, and the Venlal observers covered their sensitive ears. Anso delighted in the ruckus, however, with his primitive sensibilities. The yodel began yipping and jumping around, like an animal. Monahan allowed the cacophony for a moment, before shouting orders to pipe down. Silence overtook the bridge in an instant. The Terran captain sighed. Let's not pat ourselves on the back yet. This was a good day for us, but I promise, the Mazics won't look back as fondly. Comms, hail Qua. The beige mammal on screen answered with immediacy. His eyes were frantic, as though he'd fallen over himself to respond. Upon closer inspection, I recognized the older male as President Kupo. The Mazic leader seemed alarmed to be at the Predator fleet's mercy. Their defenses were laid bare, and the poor guy was frazzled from the assault too. Greetings, Monaghan said politely. Do you require any aid? We're happy to assist with search and rescue. There's a civilian hauler immobilized in orbit, for starters. Kupo flared his trunk. And no, thank you. We can handle it. What payment can I offer you, humans? We'll give you whatever you want. Payment? We don't want anything from you. Humanity came to your aid because we're allies. You're part of our pack now, as I imagine you would put it. The Mazik was silent for a long time. Something resembling regret flickered in his gaze, though it was gone a second later. The leader composed himself and turned back to the camera. He appeared isolated, in a vast bunker with only a single aid. I never trusted humanity. I wasn't willing to risk my people to help Earth, Kupo said. Even with Silani's revelation, I only committed resources to your team because I saw the Federation was a sinking ship. Now, you protected us, and I am, sorry. Please, let us repay your aid. The Terran captain chuckled. All is forgiven, President Kupo. Your choices were relatively tame, compared to the genocidal maniacs in the Federation. Oh human, I stood beside those people for years. It was wonderful, all herbivores working together, in perfect harmony. How did nobody see the truth? I should have. Don't blame yourself. We all see what we want to see. Just like people read evil into us, and cherry-pick our worst moments. Because that's what they're looking for. You've had to grovel and scrape for every friend you have, human, but not anymore. The Mazic Presidium will never forget your heroism. I'll set aside my best scientists to support your colonization efforts, and you can have the pick of our abandoned worlds. Unless you mind being so close to us. Not one bit. The United Nations would love to cooperate going forward. My ears swiveled away from the dialogue, and I padded away from the sensor station. Pronounced footsteps followed at once, and a shadow fell over my form. Without looking, I knew it was Tyler lurking behind me, he was stalking me with predatory intent. Fear pulsated through my ribcage, and my spines bristled to the point of discomfort. Swallowing, I ambled into the mess hall and swiveled around. The sensor's officer's chiseled jawline was rigid, suggesting the human wanted to bite me. His teeth were ill-suited for that, but the subconscious tell was there. Those blue eyes glittered like ice, scorching into my vulnerable areas. I cleared my throat. Sir, I'm sorry for my initial behavior. I panicked when you said Slanik, and I didn't want to disrupt. 
A fist rammed into my snout, before I could flinch. Tyler's punch carried phenomenal power, as his calcified bones connected with my skin. I caressed my bleeding nostrils, and the human snaked an elbow around my neck. His knee lurched up into my stomach, knocking out the breath. I doubled over, but the predator's grip kept me from collapsing. Pain overwhelmed my senses, and my conscious mind relished it. Control was slipping away, however, as instinctive panic suppressed my faculties. It took the last of my lucidity to refrain from swiping back. Tyler tightened his hold on my neck, before hurling me into a cabinet. I slammed against the upholstery, crumpling in a ball. The human marched ahead with effortless strides, and hovered over me. My heart was on the brink of bursting, seeing his malicious snarl. This is what it feels like to be physically beaten and powerless to fight back. You did that to Marcel for a week, the Terran officer spat. I, no, I coughed out the blood that trickled into my mouth. I h hate myself for it. Only, didn't K kill myself, so H humans could have justice. The predator watched me crawl on the floor before extending a rough hand. I accepted his paw, allowing him to pull me to my feet. Rather than resuming the slugfest, Tyler helped me to a chair. He retrieved a paper towel from the sink and pressed it to my nose. The primate stepped back. You want to die? Sure, but I'm a sea coward. Tears swelled in my eyes and rolled down in rivulets. Turns out I'm terrible at getting myself killed and, at picking out the monsters who hurt my family. It w wasn't Marcel, but any predator sufficed. Shit man. Did you ever get treatment for PTSD? What you went through was pretty fucked up. You should have never been in a commanding position to begin with. T treatment for what? That didn't translate. I see. You should talk to a therapist, I know a good one. It's what Marcel would want. Tyler decided our spat was finished and left me to nurse my wounds. Was mental treatment what Marcel would really want for me? My thoughts harkened back to my cell on earth and the red-haired human mocking my inability to cope. I was beginning to believe that he realized self-contempt was the worst punishment. Didn't he want me to live with this misery until death's sweet release? But Tyler knows him personally. If he says Marcel would want to help me. With Qua's rescue, I saw that humans stood for the preservation of life. Perhaps that extended to someone like myself, despite my past. It terrified me to explore my predator side, losing my identity had been devastating. How could anyone grapple with their entire life being a lie? There was one certainty, one absolute truth, in my universe now. It was that humans were the only ones that could stitch this galaxy back together. Memory Transcription Subject, Slanik, Venlal Space Core. Date, Standardized Human Time, November 29, 2136. Dawn crept over the horizon, bringing light to Scylla's supercontinent. Human forces milled near a water tower, which marked the border of a small settlement. Till fish extermination officers were holding the populace hostage, and that eliminated the option of bombing this region. Our current plan was to flush the resistance out. My heart pounded, as I rode with Marcel to the rendezvous point. The redhead had warned me that military canines were part of this operation. Fear of non-sapient predators seemed impossible to get over, but I was determined to try. Tyler had texted me videos of his dog, after the Battle of Earth, it was clear the two species shared a bond. If the awful beasts are important to humans, I have to try. Being a ghastly predator doesn't inherently make an animal bad. Marcel hopped out of our truck, and I bounded after him. The oxygen-rich environment helped numb my fear, which was a blessing. The dog was sitting among the UN pack, panting with its slobbery tongue. Its soulless eyes pinpointed me and its ears perked up malevolently. That wasn't even addressing the rotund fangs. Are you alright, Slanuk? You look like you're about to faint, the vegetarian growled. My tail drooped between my legs. 
J. Just, Peachy. He's friendly, bud. These are the most domesticated animals on earth. Hell, they were known as a man's best friend, before we met Venlo, of course. At this point, I knew the Terrans originally recruited dogs to track down prey. The non-sapiens had a sublime sense of smell, but that also meant this mutt could detect my terror. Still, this introduction was something that had to be done. Marcel had to see that I accepted his hunting ancestry. Maybe it would put my predator phobia to bed for good. I offered a silent plea to the universe that I wouldn't get swallowed whole. My paws carried me closer, and I focused on one step at a time. Every impulse pleaded to run, but I centered my thoughts around Marcel. This time, Slanik was not going to be a liability. If the animal went wild, the humans would protect me, it was their pet, after all. The hideous creature eyeballed me upon approach, and I extended a shaking paw. The monster sniffed, nostrils quivering with hunger. It opened its mouth again, and its tongue snaked toward me. Slobber coagulated on my arm fur, causing me to recoil. Its human handlers offered words of encouragement. Marcel grinned. See, he likes you. Want to pet him? I gulped, not wanting to let my human down. The terror had taken the form of a migraine, the pain was a wedge expanding beneath my eyes. The dog scrutinized me, a menacing glint in its pupils. It was sizing me up, waiting to catch me off guard. My training taught me to ground myself and focus on controlling my breathing. I reached to touch its skull and felt its coarse pelt against my paw pads. The vile predator released a guttural grunt which reverberated in its chest. The malicious bark made me spring back and collide with Marcel. Was the sable demon going to eat me? It must have decided I was prey. The mongrel stood quickly, wagging its tail. It nosed around in the dirt before grabbing a stick in its jaw. It pranced over to me and dropped the twig at my feet. Globs of saliva foamed on the bark, which suggested it had worked up an appetite. The creature emitted a high-pitched whine as I stared dumbfounded. Marcel stooped over and passed the stick to me. Throw it. Tell Dino to fetch. Did Dino? I questioned. That's his name. Come on, let the pupper have some fun. I made a mental note to inquire about the name's origin later. My throw was pitiful, landing just a few feet from where we stood. Dino scampered after it and snapped the twig off the ground. Relief flooded my chest as I realized this was play hunting. The game was predatory, but it meant the dog wasn't hunting me. However, it was a little bone chilling to consider why dogs would retrieve objects for humans. In the ancient days, this would have been a dead carcass dropped at its owner's feet. Was it tagging along with the soldiers to hunt the tillfish? Would it chase them down and report back to the Terrans with the catch? All as the primates lavished it with good boy praises. That was awesome, Slanik. Marcel clapped me on the back. You'd create quite the stir on our internet if they saw this. Huh. I g-guess predators don't eat everything in sight. Do you chow down on every leaf you see? Anyhow, I want to hear you say that you're good to come with us. Where you go, I go. D don't worry. The blinders kept the dog out of my vision as we clambered into a transport. Many humans were grinning at me, and I did my best imitation of a smile. The sight cracked the soldiers up, it was nice to lift their mood, even at my expense. Terrans didn't snarl as much as they used to, ever since a tenth of their population was lost. No amount of venlal cuteness would change that reality. Dino plopped itself beside my paws, resting its thick skull on the floor. The beast appeared tranquil, but its ears were pricked up and alert. I didn't like its chosen proximity to me, and I found myself praying that Marcel would intervene. The vegetarian merely tousled the dog's ears, the way he did with me. Active combat was preferable to this situation, 
at least I was equipped to handle that peril. Our vehicle procession didn't get far, since the Tillfish holdouts had anticipated UN intervention. Spikes were laid across the main road, and fallen trees had been hauled over the path as well. Side routes were jammed with barricades as well. Humans couldn't drag those away without heavy machinery, it would take an eternity to await equipment. It might have been possible to drive off-road, but footpaths had been coated in gasoline. A tillfish could set the route ablaze the second the UN made a move. Any open land had been accounted for as well, parks and green spaces had been flooded by local aqueducts. Even if Terran trucks could wade through the water, the muddy earth risked trapping their tires. Marcel nudged me out of the vehicle. Stay alert, Slanak. The exterminators left one route into the city, foot traffic across the roads. There's a trap waiting for sure. You won't have the element of surprise, I said. Thankfully, we have recon drones to scout ahead. We're not going in dark. The dog is great at picking up explosives, too. Dino placed its nose on the road, sprinting ahead of the humans. I hoped the dog was running off for good. If it became a wild predator, terrorizing the local populace, maybe the Terrans would stop bringing their kind on missions. No predator soldiers made an effort to stop its departure, which suggested the mutt was more trouble than it was worth. The UN infantry readied their weapons, and surveyed the area with alertness. I mimicked their movements, though the dwellings nearby seemed vacated. Thermal feeds were relayed to their holopads, granting us their drone's vision. Tillfish were scattered throughout the town square, with many taking refuge in the extermination office. Judging by their location, I assumed those were hostels. Enemy patrols also wandered the streets, policing the citizenry. The populace was small enough to monitor, and residents had been confined to their homes. That made it easier to differentiate between combatants and hostages, it was best if the innocents remained inside. Hunting down every last hostile would be a challenge regardless, since their forces were spread out across the landscape. I trundled ahead, jogging to match the human's pace. We weaved around the obstacles placed in our path, and climbed over a few lengthier objects. The persistence predators were tireless as they moved, but my body ached from the strenuous activity. I noticed Marcel favoring the leg he'd been shot in, so I decided not to ask for a ride. Are you okay? I asked. Marcel gritted his teeth. My conditioning's not, peak, after being injured for months. Recovering from Sovlin's fun room was hard enough. Gotta get my fitness back up, rebuild strength in this leg. That makes sense. We lose strength if we're sedentary too. Our scientists think that venmal physical activity has declined alongside the native predator population. Fitness isn't as important without threats. That's probably right. Likewise, a predators, our fitness correlates to our participation in hunting. Which we don't do anymore. A resounding bark jolted us out of the conversation. Dino sat beside a crate of black powder, which bore the insignia of mining companies. A fuse was attached, but the device hadn't been triggered yet. The tillfish must be waiting for humans to pass by. It was the extermination officer's humor to weaponize a predator's tactics against them. The dog's handler whistled, and it came running back with eagerness. I guess the mutt wasn't keen on escaping. After all, the primates had it under their spell. Come to think of it, even a feral predator wouldn't run away from an easy source of flesh. Terrans must keep control with generous helpings of food. It's playing along, because it's learned that humans reward it handsomely. But the second they run out of food, it'll eat them alive. Whatever my thoughts on Dino's motives, it was impressive that humans trained a beast to detect weaponry. Its scouting potential was valuable to our foray, and its sensory abilities made the journey safer. Powder explosives were primitive compared to the Terran arsenal, but I still didn't want to stroll past one. Once our troops were clear of the blast, a UN soldier flung a match at the canister. 
It erupted with a puff of smoke, churning up the nearby dirt. Marcel waved a hand, and the combat-ready primates pressed on. There had to be tillfish enemies in close proximity if they planned to trigger a blast. Terran drones circled back to our position, searching for hiding hostiles. Marcel whistled. Come out unarmed, this is over. We see you. Yes, you right there. Our surveillance had yet to locate any tillfish, but the bluff fooled the unseen assailants. A trio of insects scuttled out of a burrow and opened gunfire. I snapped my firearm in their direction, focusing on lining up the sights. After a split second of concentration, I depressed the trigger. My bullet pierced through an insect's skull, ejecting brain matter from the wound. The humans reacted swiftly as well, unleashing a string of kinetics. The enemy hit two of our men before we shot back, but wandering out into the open spelled their demise. Predators didn't miss a clear, unobstructed target, and this scuffle was no exception to that rule. I drew a shuddering breath. T that was my first kill. Sympathy flashed in Marcel's hazel eyes. The first time is the hardest. If it's any consolation, we've all been there, I still remember mine. But you're human. Doesn't matter. Unless you're a sociopath, taking a life is something you wrestle with. You feel like you've changed, and you have changed, Slanik. Just remember what you're fighting for. The Terran Brigade marched toward the town square. I was certain the extermination office was our first target, so this was no time to get emotional. My participation was for my friend's sake, the why was something I had no qualms over. Every bit of training was so that I could be effective and prove to the galaxy that Venlo weren't a laughingstock. Finding the route to the exterminator's workplace was easy, all we had to do was follow the trail of posters. Several predators stopped to scan visual translators and near bulletins. The human likeness, often an unflattering caricature, was visible on many of them. It was obvious the predator killing guild took particular offense to their presence. Marcel inspected one, shaking his head as he read the translation. The caption asked, Do these look like arboreal eyes to you? A human was clutching silverware as they stared at a crocodile on a plate. It looked accurate to earth cutlery, which was a nice touch. The artist's rendition had their mane sticking up in all directions, exaggerated fangs curving out of closed lips and veins popping in dilated eyes. I ambled further ahead and tapped a different poster. It depicted Gojids in a pen, cowering away from a human hand. Earth's silhouette was superimposed in the background, with a foreboding red glow encircling the planet. The tagline read, Asylum for All. The refugees themselves could confirm the conditions weren't nefarious, cattle ships belonged only to the Arxer. The one posted by the entrance at least had a basis in reality. It depicted an actual photograph of human soldiers dropping from the sky as Gojit stampede victims littered the ground. Coming to a city near you, the propaganda proclaimed. The subtext listed an exterminator recruiting URL specifically for volunteers to resist a UN invasion. I don't think they like us, Slanik, Marcel growled. No clue where I got that impression from, though. I took cover, waiting for humans to breach the door. You have an uncanny resemblance to the one munching on the crocodile. Is that your long-lost twin? Funny, I was thinking it looked more like your mother. Hey, we're going to settle this after the battle. My predator snarled, revealing his pearly fangs. The UN soldiers exchanged hand signals by the entrance before setting a breach charge. The blast rocked the door off its hinges and the humans stalked into the building. There were a few rifle bursts as the Terrans picked off the tillfish in the entryway. I shouldered my own gun and slunk into the lobby. Smoke clouded the air, wisps visible in the dimly lit environment. The predators were inspecting a layout of the building, their first step was to seal off exits. We knew where the bulk of the enemies were located, thanks to the drones. It was a matter of our success clearing them out. 
The humans were closing in on the rogue exterminators, and I pitied the fools who dared to fight back.